Welcome back. Today we're talking about debugging. And this is a really important skill to have and actually much easier than it sounds. So let's just get right into it. You'll recall that in our recipe, let's take a look at that. Every time that there's a new email inside of Gmail that fits our requirements, we're going to search for rows within Google Sheets. And if the corresponding row with that email address does not exist, then we add the new row. So I'm going to click on add a new row and show you an issue that I've introduced into the recipe. So here there's a data pill that says email and all this looks right on the surface. But what I've actually done is I've swapped out the normal email that we use and I put in a different one. So what we should use is the email that we got from the Gmail email. There's the trigger. So there's two steps here, and if I click on that, you'll see all this information. And we should use one of these, either the from or the to. But instead, I've used something from here, from the search rows by query step. So you can think about why that might not be such a good idea, but let's just try it out and see what happens. Let's go ahead and click the drop down, click test recipe. That's going to bring in a new email from Gmail and run it through all those subsequent steps. It's going to search for it, and if it doesn't exist, it's going to add a new row. Perfect, a new row means a successful job, and that means we can look at the output. There was a date, but there was no email address. So let's go through a process where we can isolate the cause of the problem. And the idea here, I'm gonna open this job in another tab. The idea here is for us to trace back the source of that data and learn as much as we can. And I open the job in a new tab so I can compare it side by side with the recipe. And recall that the job is the actual run of the recipe. I'm gonna go to the step where I know that things broke and click on data. So this is what we sent Google Sheets. Okay, this is add a new row in Google Sheets. This is the input, what we sent it. And in column two, you'll see that we did indeed send the date, but we did not send an email address. So where did it come from inside of the recipe? Okay, we can click here. And to find out the source of that data, I can just hover over this data pill. This is the email. If I hover over it, you'll see that it came from step one. It highlights the step. And if I collapse this by clicking on it and hover over it, you'll see that very obviously it came from step one. So let's go to step one and see what step one was. Well, we do have the address. It's searched for a row with this email. But the output is empty rows. It had nothing. So we're actually trying to add an email address from the output here that doesn't exist. That's the cause of the problem. And now that we found the cause of the problem, we can fix this by going back to the recipe, deleting this, clicking on the correct step, and getting the correct email address. So I'm going to click here, get the email address, collapse this step, click Save. And now that I've saved it, we want to see if it actually works. So what I'm going to do is close the job report, I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet, delete this row, and we want to try that again. And we want to try that with the same email that came in. So how do we do that? All we have to do is rerun the most recent job. So click on this. This is the one where we got the email address from. There we go. And it successfully added that email address. So now we know why that didn't work. And that is a really important skill to have when using Ricardo. Now when something doesn't go exactly as you'd expect it to, you have the skills to be able to trace back the source of the data and understand why your recipe didn't work the way you expected it to.